Hey, this is Anthony Abelmo. I'm here to do a lecture. My lecture today is Buddhism and the Enlightenment of Behemro and Becker. The first thing that you must understand about the Buddhist religion is the fact that the Buddhist religion is filled with racism, fraud, and myth. The greatest myth about the Buddhist religion is the myth about the concept of enlightenment. It is taught in Buddhism that one can go on a mountain and meditate and reach this perfect godly state of enlightenment. It was the enlightenment of Dr. Behemro and Becker that proved such teachings and ideas are myths. For two decades, Dr. and Becker studied texts of Buddhism and concluded that several of the core beliefs and doctrines of mainstream Theravana and Mahayana Buddhism were flawed, pessimistic, and a corruption of the Buddhist teachings. While Dr. Behemro and Becker discovered the flaws of the Buddhist teachings and in the 20th century, it was 13th century Japan, whereas the black Japanese Buddhist sage Nichiren Shonen challenged all of the Buddhist teachings of Japan and declared that only the Lotus Sutra was the correct teachings of the Buddha Shakyamuni. While Dr. M. Becker discovered this so-called superstate of enlightenment was a myth, Nitrin Shonen wrote this down in a writing called the Ghost Show, whereas he explained that the differences between a Buddha and a common person. Nitrin writes in the Ghost Show, and it's called On Attaining Buddhahood in This Lifetime. This was Nitrin's first writing. He wrote, quote, when deluded, one is called an ordinary being, but when enlightened, one is called a Buddha." Unquote. See, when we look at the life of Dr. Behemoth and Becker, we can say that he was a Buddha. Other than the Buddha Shakyamuni, Dr. Behemoth and Becker became the most educated man in India's history. In an interview, Dr. Becker said, I will accept and follow the teachings of Buddha. I will keep my people away from the different opinions of Hinayana and Mahayana. Our Buddhism is a Neo-Buddhism, Navayana. In this scripture of the Navayana tradition, there are no doctrines or renunciation of monistic life, calm, rebirth, meditation, Navayana realms of existence or four noble truths. Dr. Mbeka taught Buddha as teaching a social empowerment framework. Dr. Mbeka taught a true Buddhism that was not an escapist Buddhism, whereas you got some monk on a mountain, living in the forest, up on a mountain somewhere meditating, trying to find this mystical life of enlightenment. Dr. Inbeka was an enlightened human being. He was a Buddha. The greatest thing and the greatest happiness that can happen to a society is that we, as human beings, evolve. That we become enlightened people. And I want to give an example of a person who used Buddhism, who was not a Buddhism, but they in their life became an evolved person. In the year 18, I think it was 1891, there was a man in India. His name was Behemro 
and Becca. The Hebrew and Becca was was he came he was what they would call you know even though you may not like it but he was what they would call the nigger in India. See the nigger was the lowest person who you could be in the society among white people because they call us niggers. Well, in India, see, most of you don't do not know it, but racism actually began in India because what happened was there was the Africans of Asia who lived in present-day Pakistan and present-day India and they had a very high society and they created a religion called Hinduism. In this religion they had what is called a sanctified racism. This sanctified racism was called caste. Caste comes from the word vana which means color. Is that the lighter you are, the higher you are in the caste, like the Brahmins. And the darker you are, you, the darker you are, the lower you are put in this caste system. Now, what the Hindus did, they had all these different castes, and they had a caste that was so low that it was called the outcast. They said, you didn't believe in their caste at all. Now, this was the worst condition that any human being could be in. Now, they were called the untouchables. And untouchable meant just that, untouchable. That means that you could not even walk on the shadow of an untouchable. See, this caste system in India was worse than anything that they had in America when it came to slavery because you could at least, a, a, a slave could walk around in the caste system, the untouchable could only come out at nighttime and they could only wear clothes of dead people. They couldn't have regular clothes, they could not own anything. The only thing they could own was a dog and a donkey. And when they walked, they had to tie a broom on their ass. A broom. And they had to have a cup where they spit because their spit was considered unsanitary. Everything about them was considered unsanitary. If they look in the eyes of a Brahmin, their eyes could be cut out. If they heard any of the Brahmin teaching, molten iron was cut into their ears. If they ever said something, their tongue would be cut out. They had the most worst inhumanity against human beings in all of society. And this happened 1900 years ago when the white Kushan king Kanishka conquered India. These whites created the world's first racism and white supremacy, changing the Buddha from black to white. Genetic science placed the caste system 1900 years ago. Now, let me go back to 1891. In 1891, there was a young untouchable. His name was Rahim Ro Ambeka. At nine years old in 1900, Dr. Ambeka, he was not Dr. Ambeka at the time, but Rahim Ro Ambeka went to a school and they would not even let him study. He couldn't come into school. They made him sit in the back, and he could not sit in a chair. He had to bring bags and sacks to sit on. He could not drink the water because even drinking the water was polluting. And all of this, his life, this young man caught the hell that you could ever see in your life because he was discriminated against. But Dr. M. Becker absorbed himself into education. And he studied and studied and studied. And by the time he got to graduate, 
I think it was the king of Baruti, I think, who had offered him a scholarship. And so instead of going to school in London, he chose to go to school in America. And when he got to America, he found America to be a land of opportunity. And he studied social science and he studied law. And then he eventually went to London and he studied law. And this man raised himself up. He became what is called an enlightened human being. He was not a Buddhist at the time, but he had developed a sense of enlightenment. He wrote over 50 books, and he studied Buddhism. And now, he's born in 1891, I believe. Now, he studied Buddhism, he wrote books on Buddhism. And he made a commitment in life, and he says that I was born a Hindu, but I will not die a Hindu. Dr. Ambeka, and many of you have read things about Mohandi Gandhi. Mohandi Gandhi was a Hindu. In fact, it was Dr. Ambeka who was a legal scholar, who was one of the most brilliant minds of all of India. And when the British was about to turn power over to the Indian, Dr. Ambeka and Mohande Gandhi got into a big squabble because Dr. Ambeka wanted to bring equality. He wanted to be guaranteed that the Dalits, the untouchable, he wanted to create a situation in India like we had in America, a civil rights legislation that would make it illegal to treat people with discrimination and he wanted to guarantee so many seats in the house and he wanted to dismantle this racist and brutal system in India. But it was Mohandi Gandhi who says, oh no, what you're doing, you're moving too fast. We cannot just dismantle the Hindu system. And Mohandi Gandhi went on a fast. And he went on a fast, and as he was about to die, pressure mounted on Dr. Mbeka and said, why don't you give in? And Dr. Mbeka compromised because the British did not want him to die. To this very day, Mohande Gandhi, they don't call, they don't like to call him Mohande a great man because they understood that he was a guy that set the Dalits. Now they call him Dalits. They call them Nagas, they call them Chandelas, they call them Slum Dogs. They were different names, but they all were the same. They were the class in India who was treated poorly. Now, Dr. M. Becker, by him being the brilliant scholar that he was, he was the man who eventually wrote the Constitution of India. And in that Constitution, he made it illegal to discriminate. He, as a young man, he challenged the Hindu system. He challenged the current thinking. And he fought against oppression. And before his death, and he died in 1956, he says, I was born a Hindu, but I won't die a Hindu. And what Dr. Ambeka did was he publicly converted to the Buddhist faith. But not only did he publicly convert to the Buddhist faith, but he wrote a Buddhist book, and he studied the Buddhist Buddhism. It was Dr. Ambeka who understood the Hindu religion. He wrote many, many books, scholarly records about the Buddha, about the Hindu faith, and how this religion discriminated, and how this was an evil religion, and that it discriminated against one group of people. 
It was Dr. M. Becker who wrote the book on Buddhism, who wrote that the Buddha of, was the indigenous people of the day. It's Dr. M. Becker who is the Buddhist scholar who went in the, in, in the Indian language and he could study the books and he corrected all the ills about Buddhism. For example, in the SGI, it's a, it's a, it's called a Soka Gakkai International. Dasaki Kato wrote that the Buddha was Aryan, but it was Dr. Bihemru Mbeka who wrote that the Buddha was a Dalit. He was from the indigenous people. He corrected the ills of Buddhism. Whereas in Japan, they extricated all of the blackness out of Buddhism, but it was Dr. Mbeka in his Buddhism that actually corrected this. Now, Dr. Mbeka was an individual who evolved. And when he died in 1956, he left a legacy because he was the man that brought Buddhism back to India. In an interview, Dr. Mbeka said, I will accept and follow the teachings of Buddha. I will keep my people away from the different opinions of Hinayana and Mahayana. Dr. Becker rejected Theravada Buddhism noting that it was a bunch of nonsense that Buddhist monks would escape society by living in the mountains doing meditation. Let me explain enlightenment to you. Buddhism is education and not meditation. Dr. Brihim wrote and Becker became the most school educated man in India's history. I challenge you to find one picture of Dr. Brihim wrote and Becker meditating. It was the 13th century Japanese sage Nichiren Shonen who challenged this nonsense of becoming enlightened via quiet meditation. The Buddha himself, Shakyamuni said that he did not attain enlightenment through meditation. He, he attained enlightenment through practice. This is taught in the Lotus Sutra. You see, Nitrin Shonen, the 13th century black Buddhist sage, peeped the game of all those Buddhists going on a mountain and claiming to be enlightened from meditation. See, Nitrin peeped the con job and fraud. Nitrin noted that these monks on the mountain are not enlightened, but they had annihilated consciousness. In the words of the hood, these suckers are brain dead. They destroy their minds doing a lot of crazy esoteric stuff. Now see, Nitrin wrote about this in the Go Show. Now, he had a Go Show, a writing called the Damoku of the Lotus Sutra, and it reads, but persons of the two vehicles have annihilated consciousness and therefore cannot arouse the mind that inspires enlightenment. You see, these guys are brain dead. Now, the Buddha also said that these people uh, can attain enlightenment uh, through the Lotus Sutra. See, the Lotus Sutra can actually cure, cure those without a mind. Now, our lecture is called Buddhism and the Enlightenment of Dr. Brihem Yo and Becker. We did not get to see the Buddha Shakyamuni. However, we did get to see a Buddha by the name of Dr. Brihem Rambeka. He led India back to Buddhism. Now, it is up to us, the proud black Buddhists, to follow the path of Dr. Rambeka by us in America and by us in India joining together to teach the correct Buddhism. You see, Dr. Rambeka wrote that the Buddhism of the Buddha has the capacity 
to change accordingly to times, a quality which no other religion can claim to have. See, what the Buddhist Shakyamuni left was his true teachings and correct teachings called the Lotus Sutra. See, the Lotus Sutra is correct teachings of the Buddhist Shakyamuni that he preached at the age of 72, the last eight years of his life. You see, Shakyamuni intoned Myoho Renge Kyo, the title of the Lotus Sutra. Myoho Renge Kyo is the mind of the Buddha in a physical form. The Buddha encompassed all of his teachings in the one phrase, Myoho Renge Kyo. See, Myo means correct. It also means incomprehensible. It also means to open, open the storehouse that we have. We have a storehouse of knowledge, a storehouse of wealth. You open, that's yo. It means, also means mystic. And the word ho, it means mind or it means law. It means the Buddha law. Now, the lotus flower is a metaphor that explains the simultaneousness of the law of cause and effect. See, cause and effect is not two laws, but it's one law. It works simultaneous. And it's called Renge. Now, Cho is the essence of not only the Buddha's teaching. Cho means all the teachings of the universe. Cho means to overcome delusion. Now, Nichiren added the word Nam or Namu, which means to awaken. It also means to give reverence or devotion. We awaken to the correct law of cause and effect teachings. Now, again, Cho means to overcome delusion. Dark and Becker made a call to become enlightened. We have our teacher who pointed the way. It is up to us to become enlightened people and make changes in the world. But not only did he bring Buddhism back to India, he left an example of what it means to be an enlightened person. And we who are with the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, in our prayer books, we have a prayer for that is inclusive of Dr. Graham Root and Becker. While the Javanese and their religion do not have prayers inclusive of African and African leaders of great bodhisattvas like Dr. Graham Root and Becker, we were able to bring these type of thinking and this type of enlightenment into it. This is something that's great, and the people at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association want to include this sort of thing of bringing an enlightened nature to our society. Thank you very much.